Have you ever thought to yourself, I love to use MongoDB, but I really need transactions. If that's you, I have good news. MongoDB supports transactions. Today, I'm gonna to talk about what transactions are and then create a transaction in a Node.js script. Now, if you prefer to read instead of watching videos, I've got you covered. I've created a blog series that covers exactly the same content you'll see me cover today, and I will drop a link for you in the description of this video. Now, this is the third video in the MongoDB and Node.js Quick Start video series. In the first video, I showed you how to get connected to a MongoDB database and then how to execute each of the CRUD, that's create, read, update, and delete operations. If you have any questions about how to get started with MongoDB and Node.js, I recommend hopping back to that first video. In the second video, I discussed the basics of the aggregation pipeline. Now I'll drop links to both of those in the description below. Before we go any further, let's talk about what ACID transactions are. ACID stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. When a database supports ACID properties, operations are guaranteed to either completely happen or not happen, end with consistent data, return the same results when run concurrently with other operations as they would if run sequentially, and be permanently written, meaning that they won't be lost in the event of a shutdown or something crazy happening. Now there's a myth floating around that MongoDB does not support transactions, and that's simply not true. Beginning in 4.0, MongoDB added support for multi-document ACID transactions. And beginning in 4.2, MongoDB added support for distributed ACID transactions. So if you need a transaction, fear not, MongoDB supports transactions. Let's talk about how to use transactions in MongoDB. As you may have experienced while working with MongoDB, most use cases don't actually require you to use multi-document transactions. When you model your data using that rule of thumb, data that is accessed together should be stored together, you'll find that you rarely need to use a transaction. In fact, I struggled a bit to come up with a use case for the Airbnb data set that would actually require a multi-document transaction. Did a bit of brainstorming and I've come up with a somewhat plausible example. So let's say we want to allow users to create reservations in the sample Airbnb database. I've begun by creating a new collection named users. I want users to be able to easily view their reservations when they look at their user profile pages. So I want to store their reservations as embedded documents in the user's collection. For example, let's say that a user named Leslie creates two reservations. Her document in the user's collection would look like this. When browsing Airbnb listings, users need to know if the listing they're viewing is already booked for their travel dates. As a result, we want to store the dates the listing is reserved in the listings and reviews collection. For example, the infinite views listing that Leslie reserved should be updated to list her reservation dates. Keeping these two collections in sync is imperative. If we were to create a reservation in a document in the user's collection, Without updating the associated document in the listings and reviews collection, our data would be inconsistent. So we can use a multi-document transaction to ensure both updates either succeed or fail together. So let's write a Node.js script that uses transactions to create reservations for users. Let's get set up. First up, let's talk about your database. To utilize transactions, MongoDB must be configured as a replica set or a sharded cluster. Transactions are not supported on standalone deployments. If you're using a database hosted on Atlas, which is what I'm gonna be doing today, you don't need to worry about this as every Atlas cluster is either a replica set or a sharded cluster by default. If you are hosting your own standalone deployment, Check out the link in the description for instructions on how to convert your instance to a replica set. Let's talk about the data. I'm gonna be using a database that is hosted in MongoDB Atlas, and I've already loaded the sample data set there. Today, I'm gonna to continue working in the sample Airbnb database. I'm gonna use the infinite views Airbnb listing that I created in the first video in this series. 
Hop back to the first video if your database does not currently have the infinite views listing. The Airbnb sample data set only has the listings in review collection by default. I'm also going to need a collection to store my users. I wrote a script that you can use to quickly create this collection. So check out the description for a link to that script. All right, now that we're set up, let's implement the functionality to create Airbnb reservations. I'm going to head over to VS Code. Now I'm starting here with a template file. This template has the same structure as the code you saw me write in the last two videos. If you have questions about how this template file is structured or what it's doing, head back to that first video. I'm going to begin by creating a helper function that will generate a reservation document. You'll see how this document is used just a little later. So let's call this function create reservation document. It will have three params. So we'll say name of listing, the reservation dates, and the reservation details. I want every reservation document to have a name and dates. So I'm going to add those to a variable named reservation. So I'll say let reservation equals a new object. We'll say name is set to name of listing and dates is set to reservation dates. Now reservations can have a variety of other properties and we may not know what those are in advance. So what I'm going to do is just loop through the reservation details param and pull out all of the properties in it. So I'll say for let detail in reservation details. And then I'm going to pull the property and assign it to the reservation variable. So I'll say reservation, the detail equals reservation details, detail. So after that's done looping, the reservation is ready. I'm just going to return it. So to give you an idea of what this function is doing, let me just show you an example. I'm going to go up to main and I'm just going to paste in a call to this function. So this is saying create a reservation document where the name of the listing is infinite views. The reservation will begin New Year's Eve and end on New Year's Day. And then several other details that are specific to the reservation. So the price per night's 180. For special requests, the guest has selected late checkout. And this reservation comes with breakfast included. So let me run this. And we can see the function is returning a nicely formatted document that represents this reservation. Now that we have our helper function ready, let's create a function whose job is to actually create the reservation in the database. So let's create an asynchronous function named create reservation. Now let's talk parameters. Uh, the function should accept a Mongo client, the user's email address, the name of the Airbnb listing, the reservation dates, and any other reservation details. Now we need to get the collections that we will use in this function. So first let's create a constant named users collection, and we'll get that by saying client.db sample Airbnb dot collection users. And let's do the same for the listings and reviews collection. So we'll say const listings and reviews collection equals client dot db sample Airbnb dot collection listings and reviews. Now let's create a document for this reservation. So I'm going to call that helper function I created a moment ago and pass those function arguments. So I'll say create reservation document, name of listing, reservation dates, reservation details. And let's assign that to a constant named reservation. All right, now we're ready to start creating a transaction. Every transaction and its operations must be associated with a session. Creating a session is fairly straightforward. So I'll say const session equals client dot start session. Not too tricky, right? So I can choose to define options for the transaction and I'm not going to get into the details of those here. You can learn more about those options in the driver documentation. 
For this example, I'll say const transaction options equals, and let's set the read preference to primary, the read concern level to local, and the write concern to majority. All right. So my transaction code could throw errors, so I'm going to create a try catch block. Uh, so let's do a try catch, and then let's follow that up with a finally block. All right, let's talk about with transaction. You can use with transaction to start a transaction, run a lambda, and either commit or abort the transaction. I'm going to call session .with transaction, and I need to pass a lambda. For now, I'm going to pass an anonymous asynchronous function that doesn't do anything. I'm going to add more to that in just a moment. I'm also going to pass the transaction options I created a moment ago. With transaction is going to return a promise, so I'm going to choose to await the results. And I'm going to assign the results to a constant named transaction result. This anonymous function I'm passing to with transaction doesn't currently do anything. So I'm going to incrementally build the database operations that I want to call from inside of that function. All right, so recall that I want to make updates to two collections, the users collection and the listings and reviews collection. Let's start with making an update to the appropriate document in the user's collection. I want to add a reservation to the user's reservations array. So I'll say await user's collection dot update one. And I want to search for the user document where the email is set to the user email argument. For the update operation, I want to use add to set to add the reservation to the reservations array. Now I need to associate this operation with the transaction, so I'm going to pass the session. Let's store the results of this update in a constant named users update results. To help us see what's happening in each stage of the transaction, I'm just going to add some logging here. Let's log how many documents this query found. So I'll say console.log users update results dot matched count. That's how many um, documents found in the user's collection with the email address, user email. And then let's also log how many documents were actually updated. So I'll say console.log users update results dot modified count documents was were updated to include the reservation. Next, I want to make sure that an Airbnb listing is not double booked for any given date. So I'm going to check if the reservation date is already listed in the listings dates reserved array. So I'll, I'll say await oh, listings and reviews collection dot find one. And I want to search for a document where the name is set to name of listing and where any of the reservation dates are already in the dates reserved field. So I'll say dates reserved dollar in reservation dates. Just like I did with the last query, I need to pass the session. Let's store the results of this query in a constant named is listing reserved results. So if we get results, meaning if the Airbnb listing is already reserved for the given dates, we want to stop here and abort the transaction. So I'll say if is listing reserved results await session dot abort transaction. Aborting the transaction is going to roll back the update to the user document we made in the previous query. Now I'm going to add some logging just for clarity. So I'll say console dot error. This listing is already reserved for at least one of the given dates. The reservation could not be created. Now to really drive home this point about aborting transactions, I'm going to say console.error any operations that already occurred as part of this transaction will be rolled back. And then I'm going to add a return here. 
The final thing I want to do inside of this transaction is update the document in the listings and reviews collection. I want to add the reservation dates to the dates reserved array. So I'll say await listings and reviews collection dot update one. And I want to update the document where the name is the name of listing argument. For the update operation, I'll use add to set. I want to update the dates reserved array, and I want to add each date from the reservation dates argument. Now, I can't forget to pass the session, of course. Let's set the result of calling update one to a constant named listings and reviews update results. It's a little wordy, but hopefully you're following along with me. Let's add a little logging here just so we can trace what's happening. So first let's log how many documents matched our query. So I'll say console.log listings and reviews update results dot matched count documents found in the listings and reviews collection with the name, name of listing. And then let's log how many documents were actually updated. So I'll say console.log listings and reviews update results dot modified count documents was or were updated to include the reservation dates. So now I've done everything I want to do in this transaction. I've updated documents in both the users collection and the listings and reviews collection. Now I'm gonna scroll up a bit. Recall that I stored my transaction results here in a constant named transaction results. To check if the transaction succeeded, I can say if transaction results. Now, if transaction results is defined, I know the transaction succeeded. So I'll just say console.log, the reservation was successfully created. Else, meaning transaction results is undefined, I know that the code intentionally aborted the transaction. So I can say console.log, the transaction was intentionally aborted. If something goes wrong in my transaction, an error will be thrown. So inside of my catch, I'll say console.log, the transaction was aborted due to an unexpected error, and we'll stick that error in there. Regardless of what happens, I need to end the session. So inside of the finally block, I'll say await session dot end session. I've written a lot of code here. Let's actually try this out. I'm gonna create a reservation for Leslie at the Infinite Views listing for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. So I'm gonna scroll up to main and I'll say await create reservation. Now I need to pass several arguments. First up, the Mongo client. Next is the user email address. So I'll say leslie at example.com. Next, I need to pass the name of the listing. So I'll say infinite views. And then I need to pass an array of dates. So I'll create a new date for 2021-1231 and a new date for 2022-0101. And then finally, I need to pass any other reservation details. So I'll say the price per night is 180. There is a special request for late checkout. And for breakfast included, I'll say true. Okay, I'm gonna save my file and uh, let's run it. Okay, we got a lot of output here. Let's look at what's happening. We can see one document was found in the user's collection with the email address leslie at example.com. So our user exists, that's good. One document was updated to include the reservation. That's good. Then one document was found in the listings and reviews collection with the name infinite views. So we found that listing. And one document was updated to include the reservation dates. The reservation was successfully created our transaction worked. Let's take a look at Leslie's document. Here we can see she has the reservation we just created for her. 
Let's also take a look at the infinite views listing in the listings and reviews collection. We can see this document also shows that it has been reserved on the dates we requested. Now let's say a different user, Tom, tries to create a reservation at the same Airbnb location on the same dates. I'm just gonna update the email address here to say tom at example.com. And then I'm gonna run the script again. Here we can see the transaction was intentionally aborted because the listing was already booked. We can take a look at Tom's document and see he has no reservations. We can look at the infinite views listing and see the dates reserved array remains unchanged. So the transaction successfully aborted and neither of these documents were updated. So there you got to see an example of a transaction that succeeded as well as a transaction that was aborted. All right, let's wrap this up. Today we talked all about transactions. We discussed what transactions are and wrote code to use a transaction in a Node.js script. When you use relational databases, related data is commonly split between different tables in an effort to normalize the data. As a result, transaction usage is fairly common. When you use MongoDB, data that is accessed together should be stored together. When you model your data this way, you will likely find that you rarely need to use transactions. But if you need them, don't worry, MongoDB supports them. One thing to note as you begin using transactions, be sure you are using the correct read and write concerns when creating a transaction. I'm not gonna get into the details here, so check out the MongoDB documentation for more information. If you wanna reference the code you saw me write today, check out the Quick Start blog series I wrote that covers the exact same content. I also have a GitHub repo that shows just the code with no explanation. So I will drop links to both of those in the description below. All right, we have only one video left in the series. I know, don't be too sad, it'll be okay. That last video is all about change streams and triggers. In that video, I'll be explaining how you can automatically take actions based on changes in your database. That video is gonna be releasing soon, so be sure to just subscribe so you do not miss it. If you have any questions about transactions or MongoDB in general, I encourage you to ask them in the MongoDB community. My teammates and I are there every day answering questions and discussing best practices with members of our developer community. I hope to see you there.